hit subscribe to the DIY Writer to support your hardworking authors and also lessen your chances of ending up as a victim in their next book. Join me at the first annual iCurus Book Convention, May 8th and 9th. This conference has a great lineup of speakers, including little old me, talking about podcasts, vlogs, and other neat author stuff. Go to iCurus, I-Q-A-R-U-S, book, con, C-O-N, dot com for more information. Hope to see you there. This is Jeff Bacon with the DIY Writer Podcast, and today I have Darian Smith with me. Darian, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It, it's actually uh, yeah. tomorrow there. So, you know, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Hooray for time zones. I live in the future and it's very confusing. <laughs> yeah, please tell us today is going to be a wonderful day, please. Of course. Yes, definitely. It's it's going to be great. It's looking Listen, good. It's looking the, good. The sun will come out tomorrow. Isn't, didn't that little orphan tell us that? It's yeah. got to be right. <laughs> so here in wonderful Wisconsin, it's supposed to be like 12 degrees tomorrow. Now, is that Celsius or Fahrenheit? Because I get very confused. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we do Celsius well, here, and I have no idea what that means in Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them you'd be dead, and the other one it's just really cold. Just really cold. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twelve degrees Kelvin. That's oh, okay. That's, that's what we're going for. Twelve degrees right. Kelvin. It'll just feel that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think zero we're, is absolute we're in zero. Here. I know. But yeah, enjoying it. It's great. Uh, I know. Every every time I talk to somebody from New Zealand, it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so wonderful. You know, it's a <laughs> vacation. Da, 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 da. You know, and I'll be middle of summer here and I'll be like, it's so cold. Really? <laughs> how, how cold does it get in New Zealand? Not too cold, to be fair. I think. I mean, we get, well, not where I am, but we do get snow in, in parts of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm in Auckland. We don't do snow in Auckland. Nah, it's, <laughs> no, it's not a thing. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's really funny when uh, people from down south, uh, southern part of the United States come up to here, like, you know, somebody from Florida. And it'd be, you know, it's like 70 degrees there in the middle of winter and, you know, 114% humidity. And, you know, they're just loving life with all the crocs and everything else they got going on down there. And it's all wonderful. And they come up here and it's 20 degrees and you'd think that you're shooting them with a gun. They're just like, oh, God, it just hurts. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, come on, you wussy. Put on a coat. Yeah. This is My... the only coat I have is this t shirt. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> My wife really feels the cold, um, and so she will generally have our, our heat pump, especially in winter, cranked up really, really high, and she's still got layers of wool on, and I'll be sitting there in a t-shirt going, I'm dying, can we just can we just cool <laughs> it down in just a fraction, just a little so, bit? <laughs> so how do you like living in a sauna? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a challenge. It's a challenge. <laughs> it's great for the skin it exfoliates and yeah oh, whatever <laughs> sure let's it's there's always a bright side yeah, right? there's there's <laughs> nothing like waking up and pitting out right away because the hot that you know the house is at set at uh, 90 degrees yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i i've got kind of that actually my wife's gotten much better at it but when we first got married it'd be like you know that heating bill is going to be horrible it's like oh no 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 it'll be fine you know <laughs> Turn up, turn up, turn up. It's like, oh God, so hot. And you can't even sleep, you know. It's, I, I've just accepted the heating bill now. It's it just is what it, it is. It just is what it uh, is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she she works from home as well. So she's got her own office and she can regulate the temperature in there. And I'll kind of stand in the doorway because that's as far in as I can stand without baking. And she's like, You're letting the heat out. Like, okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the funniest thing? You're letting the heat out. It's like, you know, you do open the door. It's like opening up an oven. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't, I shouldn't laugh because I actually do. I, I've got a little office and it, it, it's on an outside wall. So it can get very cold in here. So I do have a heater and at times I'll forget to shut it off because I'll be writing or doing whatever. And all of a sudden I'll be like, God, I'm sweating the hell you know you know and you open up that door and it's like you know getting hit with a br just a you know a, a rush of cold air and it's like okay it's like 114 degrees in here i need to call you know but when i get focused i just don't really notice anything <laughs> yeah yeah 
<clears throat> which is great for having a wife and kids. <clears throat> oh, you're still here. Yeah. Okay. They love that stuff. But you know what? We're here to talk about your books, man. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. All right. Cool. So you have a series called The Agents of Calanon. Calanon. Uh, yes. Me. Yeah. I'll, I'll really try and get that and not butcher it. And you just released, uh, what was it, book five? Book three. Oh. Book three it's just came out. Book three. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Book three. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Numbers. Math's hard. Math's Numbers hard. are really inconsequential. There's three books. Yeah. We're, we're writers we don't do numbers we do words <laughs> you know it, it is funny but I, I i always screw something up right at the beginning so you know just uh if i don't screw up anything it's because you only have one book but <laughs> <laughs> well that's, that's good no yeah so battles legacy is book number three so it's um the series is kind of i describe it as being murder mysteries in a fantasy world like csi but with swords and magic okay um, and so yeah book each book has its own kind of mystery that the characters are, are dealing with um, but there's an overarching story through the series as well so is this your speculative fiction yeah yeah i love the term speculative fiction it's such a i'm pretending that it's not fantasy it, it, it's almost like pretentious <laughs> it, it is just, right <laughs> yeah. oh it's speculative you know it's, it's like a speculative, speculative stock it's yeah it's you know it it's not really fantasy you know it's it's just kind of you know a yeah, speculation of fiction yeah I, <laughs> genres organization here are but, um, funny as hell you're right oh yeah um that is basically fantasy sci-fi and horror and i think because the it's such a mouthful to say all of that that they just call themselves big spe speculative fiction and yeah yeah so it kind of clumps it all together but yeah it's it's kind of a funny term um i i constantly make fun of uh um people who write erotica oh yeah just because um, it doesn't matter what genre I seem to be writing in, there's some erotica piece that's like number two that you have to, you know, try and beat out. It's like, what the hell is that doing here? This is horror. Well, it's a really scary erotica. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Give me a break. I am confused by erotic horror. I'm like, am I scared or horny? What's going on? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I've got two different feelings here, and I'm not sure yeah. what to do with them. Like, uh, <laughs> and it works for some people, but yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, man, it's that's, that's weird. You know, okay, just just to be a little uh, blunt, you know, it's it's really weird to be running away from a chainsaw or a machete or a sword with a boner. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you know, it, it's awkward. I'm not, I'm not even sure how you write that. Yeah, and even kind of in those, I mean, you see it in in a lot of. Um, kind of blockbuster movies and stuff as well it's like you know here's this crazy we're on the run things are trying to kill us but we'll we'll stop for a love scene in in the back of this you know train car that we're hiding in or whatever and i'm like seriously this is what you're doing <laughs> right now <laughs> instead of getting more of a head start against the bad guy what's <laughs> sex break people. yes right in the middle of a horde <laughs> that, that's perfect good timing way to go some director just need to have something in there for a little bit of candy yeah yeah exactly I mean, that, that that is and it's shut off damn it <laughs> uh i i think friday the 13th took care of that the best look it's a yeah. sex scene they're both gonna die <clears throat> yeah <laughs> and as soon as you see a bear back all of a sudden a machete comes right through it it's like oh good it's over uh, all right there we go yeah <laughs> so much for the romance yeah yeah, I, I guess that's why I'm not a, a horror erotica writer. I, yeah, I wouldn't. You know, and God bless them if they sell a lot of books, but I just, it just, you know, how do you compete with that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just can't. So stay, stay in your own genre, please. It's just erotica. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But anyway, so back to your books, Battles Legacy. Yes. You know, everybody's got their own take on on how they build you know their magic systems and their worlds and everything can you tell us a little bit about your uh, world and magic system yeah so i've been a bit of a weird thing in that i've got a couple of different magic systems in the in the world 
Okay. Um, so I have a, a group of people who are, it's kind of my take on necromancy, I guess, in, in some ways, but it's, it's a melding of elemental magic and uh, zombie raising, but it's not called zombie raising in the, in the book. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's kind of one system that, that happens. And then I've got your sort of traditional mage, um, who is one of the characters and he's 400 years old. He's, he's uh, kind of bound to the country that is the main setting for the, for the stories. Um, but he's only recently discovered youth again or be become youthful again. So he's kind of a crotch. I describe him as being a crotchety old man, but in a teenager body with hormones. So he's a bit of okay. a, yeah. Or, or as one reviewer said, Drayson's still a dick. Um, <laughs> 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 for one of the books, it was like, yeah, that's an accurate description of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so he's, he's kind of got his, his magic system that goes with the, the mage thing. And there are you know, very few mages in, in this world because in order to study enough to become a mage, you have to essentially firstly extend your lifespan beyond normal human lifespan to actually have enough time to learn magic. Um, so not that many people, A, achieve that, or B, are even willing to try because if you spend your whole life trying to do it and then fail, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so there's not too many of them around. Um, and then there's another uh, character and another group, I suppose, therefore, of characters uh, who have more of a sort of a psychic ability, which is referred to as being the instinct um, mm -hmm. in the series. Uh, so yeah, kind of, because in many ways it was designed as kind of a like a CSI forensics team, but magic. Uh, so I kind of needed there to be characters who were different sorts of experts and different sorts of magic. Sure. Um, so that's kind of how that all came about, that they all have their own different magic systems that they're working with. Um, but yeah. it's kind of fun. And, and you know, there's, there's a bit of attitude between uh, the mage and the uh, zombie raising character where he doesn't think that her kind of magic is really that, you know, that's, that's lower kind of magic. So she always takes a chance to dig at him because he hates being referred to as a wizard. So every single time they meet, she calls him a wizard. And blames it on the fact that this is her second language. Sorry, I'm not from around here. I don't understand. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> pulls that card every time. She knows. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's a bit of fun having that conflict in the in the story as well. It's always fun when you can piss a character off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So much. <laughs> yeah, and then they just kind of grind at each other for you know the rest of the book or you know at least the scene. Yeah. Yeah. That that's fun. <clears throat> And uh, I've had a bit of feedback on this already in, in this latest book, book three, uh, Ula, who is the character that can sort of raise or not really, she's animating the dead, we'll put it that way. Um, she went out of her way to actually visit a bunch of people ahead of time and explain to them how much he really loves being called a wizard and that they should call him a wizard <laughs> when he gets there. <laughs> just so that it's not just her that is doing it. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> oh, that's that that sucks. Poor guy. But he's a dick, right? So he's, he's a dick. He asked for it. Yeah. He really <laughs> Cool. So you've got a bunch of short stories and a bunch of uh, uh, short story collections, I guess. And uh, this series, um, what what do you got coming out next? Uh, next, I'm working on a couple of things. So um, probably the, the most likely next to be released uh, is going to be a young adult sort of urban fantasy set here in New Zealand. Okay. Um, so I'm taking one of our local myths um and kind of putting a bit of a twist on it and and bringing it into the modern modern world so that's going to be what is the local myth that you're going to be bringing into the modern world so it's the myth of pania um who and i it's interesting because i think a lot of different mythologies have a a version of this in that um the myth of pania was that she was kind of a, a sea sea nymph sea creature person of the sea in some way um magical being uh who fell in love with uh 
a land dwelling human um, and came to to live with him. And of course, there's a rule that says, you know, you can't, I think in, in this case, it's, um, you know, I can't eat cooked food because I'm a magical being and that would, you know, be bad for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in, in other myths and other mythologies, it might be don't look at me in the in the nighttime or don't take yeah. my silky skin or whatever it is. Um, so in, in this case, of course, he talks to the elders and goes, oh, you know, I want to make sure that, that this wonderful woman stays with me forever uh and they're like hey why don't you just slip a bit of cooked food in her mouth while she's sleeping kind of thing um and if naturally she wakes up realizes what he's done and runs away back to the sea with their child and is never never heard from again um so yeah that's that's kind of the myth and there's a there's a really cool statue um uh, at one of the towns i think napier um that depicts this, um, which is really cool. And I've, I've always kind of liked that, that sort of myth. Uh, so I'm, I'm sort of in this version, <laughs> the kind of today version, my kind of young adult Harry Potter slash <laughs> whatever it is. Um, this is where she's, she's left, some spoilers a little bit, but she's left uh, something behind when she, when she went back. Um. <clears throat> and so our, our young hero has to has to find this, or, and she's uh, going to encounter some some difficulties, obviously, along the way, and and some other people and creatures are after this item because it's something huh. quite desirable. <laughs> it sounds cool. When do you uh, when do you plan on releasing that? Uh, hopefully later this year. Well, definitely later this year. Um, I'm trying to be very hedgy about my release dates because in the past <laughs> with battles legacy i promised a release date a couple of times and life got very much in the way and i, mm -hmm. I failed to deliver on that so this time i'm like i'm holding same, off on giving an boat, actual same boat <laughs> 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 so yeah i have to be very careful about that i don't want to don't want to pull that one on people too many times <laughs> yeah. yep yeah, I, I actually said I, I was going to release one almost a year ago and I didn't. And then I said, okay, I'm getting real close. And then I reread it. It's like, I want to change a few things. And I changed a ton of crap. And then that screwed up my next book, which I, I made the mistake of writing, you know, books four and five at the same time. And it just, it such a mess. And it's like, okay. <sighs> That's not going to happen. All right. And then I started another yeah. project. So it's like, okay, you're an idiot. So I'm, I'm <laughs> trying, I'm trying to work myself out of the weeds right now. That same kind of mess where it's like, okay, got to start releasing stuff again. But you know, the whole COVID 2020 thing, come on, give me a break. It is thrown everyone for a loop, I think. And I mean, we're so lucky here and that we managed to, you know, shut it down really quickly. And, and so we're mostly well we are basically back to normal aside from keeping people at the border to make sure they don't bring it back in um but yeah, yeah. for for you guys over there it's oh no yeah. we have it completely under control sure, sure. just saw on the news it yeah. it looks like it's all flattening out and everything's going to be just peachy king okay cool oh yeah 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 <laughs> any day now everything's going to return back to normal yep yeah yeah not <laughs> We Americans have a problem at, at following rules and instructions and uh, not really playing by, uh, by uh, <clears throat> anybody else's game. So, you know, we just do what we want anyway. It, it has been interesting watching, watching that and kind of the, the resistance to follow the, the things that would, would help um, has been quite strange from, from the perspective of, of us over here. Um, but then I think we were also very lucky in that our government had a very strong consistent message mm -hmm. right from the start and did things like uh, wage subsidies so that when we were in lockdown people could actually afford to, to be in lockdown yeah yeah and be in lockdown um and so we could get through that quite quickly and and you know the economy bounced back really quickly as a result of of all of that um whereas yeah i, I can understand people not particularly wanting to deal with a lockdown if they have no income and they can't buy food. You know, this is certainly a challenge. It's, it, it's, it's kind of a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, you know, on the other hand, uh, 
I think they would have been much better off saying, you know, okay, it, as far as, uh, you know, the lockdowns and the businesses and everything else, they, they kind of came in and, and uh, said, you're going to lock down. And, you know, that's, that's where a lot of people over here are like, no, I'm not, you know, <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, what are you going to do? Well, we're going to find you. Okay. Well, you know, and, and they just, they, you know, same thing with the colleges and everything else. I mean, every, every, everything that uh, they tried to do, or they try to do over here just gets, you know, um, disobeyed. And so, you know, we end up with, yeah, you know, and, and there's a lot of people I know have gotten COVID and haven't had a problem. I know a lot of, uh, uh, you know, not a lot, but a few people that, you know, had, major problems with it and everything else and and everybody's got their own opinions on you know how dangerous it is and this that and the other thing and then you got the the wonderful uh, facebook scientists who know everything and tell you, you know what <laughs> yes. just just take a, a shot of b12 in your ass and you'll be fine you know <laughs> okay thanks I'll, I'll, I'll take that dr facebook thank you yeah yeah if only the scientists had thought to check that yeah um, i wish they would have done some research you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a decade of of medical training, and you know, yet you could find it on on YouTube just like that. I, I you know, <laughs> yeah, it, it amazes me. Well, you know, I did this, and I never got it. Okay, that's really cool. And you know, they a both sample people, size of one, <laughs> a sample size of one. You know, which is is the proven scientific method, you know, <laughs> of of actually testing shit, and. Um, you know, the, the thing that really, the thing that really interests me about that is they get followers. They get people that actually, you know, like, oh, wow, I'm going to try that. Seriously. One glass of gasoline every day will take care of COVID. Okay, cool. Good job. It, I mean, it will. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have to worry about catch COVID. <laughs> you're you're not going to have to worry about COVID. That's right. You're not going to catch anything after that. <laughs> what I maybe think, catch fire. <laughs> <laughs> what I think has been really funny has been the uh, um, and somebody's going to slap me for this, but I don't care. Um, the people that say, "Okay, you need to drink a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar." every day and you will just lose weight and it's these people that yeah i mean i okay you know take apple cider vinegar and just drink it it's like really and that that's your weight loss program okay apple cider vinegar has this mythological ability apparently to like it's the cure for everything i know you see if you google it people are using it for anything and everything i'm like it cannot possibly do everything no no <laughs> uh, yeah like even if you're gonna i don't know it's it's, it's like this whole um the some of the conspiracy theories and stuff this QAnon stuff that's that's been flying around i'm like surely like back in the day didn't we have to make our conspiracy theories at least a little bit believable and <laughs> you know and shame on me i really didn't follow that at all I mean, I really, I, I don't know why, but it just didn't, I, I love conspiracy theories, but that one I just couldn't buy into. I mean, I just, you know, whatever, whatever Q is, I, I don't know. But, uh, um, and as of late, I started uh, watching it because it started popping up all over the place. Q, 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 Q. And, you know, some people that say it's a PSYOP, some people say it's a, uh, you know, a quantum computer that's making, uh, um, or telling you what's going to happen in the future, but the future is very fluid, so it might not be right. And it's like, hmm. I think I've seen that show. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, um, it, it just, it, I don't know. I, I, I just can't buy into the Q stuff. And I don't know why. And then you get people that try and mix the Q stuff with religion, and then it gets really interesting. And it's Ooh, like, yeah. hmm. And, and interesting in a good way to where it's like, okay, you know, that that's kind of a new twist on the old supercomputer that's predicting the future, or, you know, picking a number and saying this person's going to die in three days, you know, go save them or, you know, whatever, whatever your, uh, your thing is, you know, it's like, you could actually work with that. That's kind of cool, you know, but uh, I've, I've suddenly in the last uh, 20 days, I've got uh, um, probably about three uh, stories that are revolving around Q 
short stories. And I was like, yeah, yeah. write that, you know, type stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, if there's a supercomputer predicting the future, can I just put in a request for lotto numbers? That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The Q dump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't realize how big that was. I mean, yeah, it, they, yeah, the, so these Q drops have huge followings. I mean, in you know, I'm I'm kind of a dork, so I follow that kind of stuff just to. Uh, I, I I love watching people and how they react. You know, we were talking about apple cider video or uh, vi yeah. apple cider vinegar. You know and how it saves everything. There was one comment that just I I almost peed my pants. I was laughing so hard. Uh, this guy comments and says, "Come on, apple cider isn't like weed or anything. It can't cure everything." <laughs> You know, it's like this guy actually, I like him. Who is he? You know, and yeah, kind of dropped off Facebook. I he was, but uh, it, it was funny as hell. It's like, yeah, apple cider's not weed. Come on, it's not gonna save your, you know, it, it okay, is. Specific. I can buy into that. <laughs> Even the, the weed thing is quite hilarious because I, my um, day job is with people who have neuromuscular conditions, so a whole right, like 60 odd different uh. Mm -hmm. genetic conditions that affect the muscles basically um muscular dystrophy and all sorts of stuff and i get asked about weed quite a lot it's like you know is this going to help me is this going to help me and like probably not in all honesty <laughs> it's, it, it might help with some pain but it's you know it's not going to cure you it's it's just going to make you feel see i i think the politically correct you. answer now <laughs> is well it's not going to hurt you yeah <laughs> You're not going to be any worse for using it, so go ahead, it's, you know, vape it up. <laughs> it's a we had a, a big uh, referendum at our last election about whether it should just be open slather. Yeah. Um, here, and it, it was pretty close, but uh, no, the, it ended up being a no. Oh, okay. So you you can get it uh, medicinally, I I believe, but it's it's reasonably expensive to do so. But it's still officially uh, a no. Oh, so New Zealand's New, New Zealand's not fun anymore. Come on. No, we're still fun. Open it up. Come on. But officially <laughs> not fun with weed. Oh, okay. <laughs> officially. <laughs> I honestly think in the US it's going to be legal here in all 50 states in the next let's say 5 years. I would I, I would truly guess. It seems know. like it's going that way. I think people are a little bit more relaxed about it in general. Yeah. I think once they got over the fact that, you know, they consider it a, a gateway drug and it's like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe, you know, maybe it's just like a beer, you know, or whatever. And however they want to rationalize it, it's like, okay, we'll yeah. just make it legal. Re realistically, probably alcohol is more of a gateway drug than probably else. So, yeah. Yeah. Not that, you know, hey, saying one bad thing is is not as bad as another bad thing isn't necessarily the, the justification to go for, but, but hey, whatever. Yeah, you know, it, it's it, one guy that I, I kind of follow, he's like, you know, I was just smoking a, a joint the other day and uh, sitting there, really good stuff. And I just thought, you know, why don't I just try meth? That's got to be better, you know. It's like no, it doesn't work that way. But you know, yeah. it, I don't know. I think I think the whole drug thing is uh, interesting. I think you've got people that draw their lines in the sand. It's like we're not doing this ever, and it's like okay, well, you know, yeah. You know, or the other side, weed's got a bad rap, man. It's like, well, you know, you probably revitalize the Twinkie industry. You know, <laughs> you know? yeah, hey. <laughs> someone's got to eat them. <laughs> yeah. Save the hostess cupcake. There you go. Legalize weed. The bakers will love you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then so the, you, that's that's one industry the millennials won't get blamed for killing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what we do is, you know, they're so damn healthy and everything. They got their avocado toast and everything else. Um, yeah. You know, <clears throat> all we do is we hook them on weed and all of a sudden they're they're like in line. You know, they're, they're buying all the paste, all the cream filled pastries, There you go. <laughs> all the chips and everything else. And, you know, they're, they're gaining 25 pounds and no, they look like the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. Damn millennials. <laughs> anyway. Um, so you do have a nonfiction book out there though. I do. The psychology yeah. workbook for writers. Tell me about yeah. that. 
Um, yeah, so I come from a counseling and family therapy background. Um, so that was that's something that I did for a, a long time. Um, and then I, I found that I was using a lot of those theories in my writing just to develop the characters and, and in all honesty, corrupting my education. <laughs> because <of course. laughs> for, for therapy, you're trying to resolve conflict and, and help people move through their issues. When you're writing, you want to create conflict and give your characters issues right. uh, so, to make it more interesting. Uh, so it's kind of flipping it all on its head. Maybe um, that was therapy for you. Oh, there's writing is definitely therapy for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So basically, I've, I found that I was doing a lot of talks about that to, to writer groups and, and things. And a lot of people were kind of saying to me, why, why do you not have a book about this that I can now buy and take away instead of having to try and write down everything you say? Mm -hmm. And I kind of went, that's a really good point. Why don't I? So I wrote said book. Um, and it basically, it, it tries to make it really simple. So it takes a whole bunch of psychology theories and counseling theories and simplifies them and then just gives uh examples that i think probably everybody knows um i did, somebody did hassle about oh this isn't the classics this isn't the kind of the the books that they made you read at at university i'm like no because it's not actually what people necessarily want to read so I, w I wanted examples that people definitely know yeah um and then it's got some worksheets to to kind of help people to bring what they've learned into whatever uh, whatever their work is at the time so yeah it's, it's pretty short and pretty simple but um it seems to be really helpful. i don't mean to laugh but i do i do love it so when academics get involved in fiction you yeah. don't understand the rules you don't you didn't properly no 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 we make shit up over here you, yeah, you don't exactly. go away you don't belong here yeah just calm down this is for fun this is yeah, for this fun <laughs> Fun. We we can we can have themes and and serious messages and and whatever too, but it's also it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be. There's this entertainment factor. What's that? Yeah. Oh. Reading should be hard work. No, no. Reading should be fun. You should just pick it up and it should pull you along. It, it should, but you know, there's nothing like a textbook. Oh yeah. <laughs> you, you got it <laughs> well, yeah don't get me started on textbook prices <laughs> <laughs> well you know so is this an actual workbook or does it uh because i see you have an ebook do you have a and uh, you have a paperback so i mean would you prefer yeah. people to buy the paperback or the uh the the actual ebook i mean i i'm fine either way um the the paperback sells quite well because it does have worksheets in it so it if, does, if you're okay. wanting to actually work through the questions and, and fill in your answers yeah. then probably a paperback's a good way to go right. um and if you're gonna yeah, do that with an ebook don't use a sharpie exactly <laughs> Yeah, maybe find another piece of paper or, or something like that. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you Very, might go through a lot of Kindles otherwise. <laughs> yeah, you know, a little alcohol wipe. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Like an be, fine. be fine. Sure. So, what else is going on over there? Oh, um, I don't know what's happening. It's summer. We're still kind of enjoying that. Yeah. That's pretty good. Just to yeah. rub it in. I'm so Sorry. jealous. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Again, 12 degrees today. Thank you. <laughs> um, I've got a couple of events coming up, which is, is quite cool. Um, and again, again, sorry, that's, we get to do events and things without the risks, um, which is nice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep on, I keep on going there, that. pal. I know. I'm like, oh, geez, I should shush. This is yeah, we, being a bit. We're over amazing. here just having uh, living life like we used to. Yeah, you know, screw yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're not on an island, pal. You know, whatever. That did help. I will give you that. Being yeah. on an island definitely <laughs> helped. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to go. Okay, borders. <laughs> yeah. yeah quarantine when you come in yeah we have to build walls you just have the that, that little problem. <laughs> yeah we we got a moat yeah a moat a big moat yeah. <laughs> no one's swimming to new zealand uh, you can try but i wouldn't advise it <laughs> yeah. uh, cool so what kind of events you got coming up uh, so we have a regular thing here that's called armageddon um 
and so that happens in, in the major cities. Uh, so the next one is in Christchurch, which is really cool. I haven't been to Christchurch in ages. Um, probably not. Oh, no, I've been once since they had big earthquakes uh, about 10 years ago. Um, so this, that's going to be quite nice for me to get to go down there. So you're going to an event called Armageddon to a place that's had big earthquakes. That sounds yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Now that you put it that way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just just sounds really fun. I hope you have a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I think I've already booked my flights, damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <hell> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, that's, that should be quite good. Um, it's it's quite a neat old city, actually, but I know a lot of, one of the iconic buildings, there's the, the big old cathedral, and I know that took quite a bit of damage in the in the earthquake. So it'll be interesting to see, I guess, kind of what's what's been rebuilt and, and what the place is like now, which is kind yeah. of cool. Um, and then... That's, so that's the first weekend in March, and then the second weekend in March, I'm going to another event in Dunedin, which is called the Edge of the World Expo, which is a great name for Dunedin because it's it's way in the South Island. They're pretty much it's out actually on the edge of the, the, edge of the world. world, right? Yeah, <laughs> um, so that's quite fun. I went to that last year as well. That was actually my last event before COVID hit. Um, oh, really? Last year, yeah. So I literally I met with one of my day job clients and we were talking about COVID because it had just become this thing overseas and we were like ah oh, no it'll be fine it'll be like SARS you know we won't have to stress too much uh -huh. and and then literally while I was in Dunedin uh the announcements came out we're closing the borders where you know this, this is actually bigger than what what we thought oh so this isn't like, like oh, SARS wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we uh, were wrong. We were very wrong. Uh, so yeah, and it, it was quite a, quite a weird feeling to be kind of by myself in this at the other end of the country, mm -hmm. and, and just kind of in, in a hotel room and and going to a big event with lots of people around, and then hearing, you know, oh, actually, you know, this is this is spreading quite quickly. We've got a few cases here now. Right. Mm -hmm we're closing the borders, we're, we're taking quite drastic action. And I was sitting there going, okay, yeah, we don't, because New Zealand loves tourists. Oh, yeah. We really do. Um, so for us to to close the borders and say, okay, we're, we're literally just shutting down our tourism industry was a big deal. So it was quite a shock. So yeah. Like, oh, okay. Um, That's when you start looking at things and saying, oh, this is serious. Okay exactly yeah and that's when i started paying a little more attention to what had been going on overseas and you started hearing the stories about what had happened in italy and and you know some of these other countries and I'm like, oh okay yeah what i thought was funny was um i was listening to some people talk <clears throat> and um you know they're discussing italy and how bad they were oh my god i can't believe that uh you know, how they had no control over anything. And it just, it, oh my God, it just, doesn't, oh my, oh my, you know, we would never be that way. Let's fast forward six months. Oh shit, we're in the US. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair to Italy, they were caught by surprise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We knew what we we're getting into. And guess what? We screwed yeah. it up just as good as everybody else did. But uh, it's, actually, it's better. Uh, yeah. I think we've all been. In, in a lot of ways caught off guard and I suppose we probably shouldn't talk endlessly about COVID but I think as a world we've been caught off guard you know we haven't had something like this since you know the Spanish flu or something we've become yeah. so complacent and so sure of ourselves that you know that couldn't happen to us uh, even though the experts all told us that it would at some point. What what um, I got a kick out of is you know a lot of the uh, advice that people were giving or, you know, like the CDC over here, you know, the uh, um, Center for Disease Control, <clears throat> you know, well, now you have to start washing your hands. And my question was, who the hell doesn't wash their hands over here? Evidently, a lot of people. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Bubba's sitting there in the trailer. Well, shit, got to hook up the water again. <clears throat> got to wash our hands now. It's like, well, who, who's not doing this? 
it was kind of scary wasn't it yeah, yeah and what like, i found oh, was okay. really funny was i went to a store a big box store to buy some stuff and they had the sinks shut down in the bathroom and there's no soap in the dispensers nothing and due to covid you can't wash your hands in a public it's like really wait a minute I thought we we're washing our hands now. We're not. Instead, they had these sanitation booths where you had to do hand sanitizer. It's like, okay, I'm not getting what might be on my hands off. I'm just lathering it up with uh, some more alcohol. Okay, that's 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 wonderful. It, it, it was just it was stupid and strange, and it's just you know again another uh, um, wonderful life lesson of uh, how people can take something and just totally screw it up. I mean, just, I got an idea. Let's not wash our hands. Wait a minute. That doctor over there says to wash your hands. Okay. Now that your mom told you to do that when you're eight. Okay. Yeah. This is literally basic hygiene that we've known for right. years. Right. Right. <laughs> Should I brush my teeth and floss? No, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Just wait till they start falling out, then do it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Or, you know, just, just a bit of mouthwash swirled around, you know, it'll, it'll leave the food in there, but. It'll probably kill something. It, you know, you know, <laughs> it'll sanitize your mouth. But uh, that is know. not advice, people. Do not. Do <laughs> yeah, please. All of this is tongue in do cheek. We're just kidding. Teeth. Yeah, wash your hands, brush your teeth. Yes. A couple times a day, maybe. You know. Uh, yeah. Not just the not just the one. I washed my hands back in 1972. I don't understand. Yeah. I have to do it again. Jeez. What? <laughs> Next, you'll be telling me to bathe more than once a month. <laughs> it's funny because um, my wife monitors the amount of uh, hand soap that's used in every bathroom to make sure that everybody's washing their hands. Wow. And if she doesn't think that the proper amount of hand soap has been disposed or uh, dispensed, um, she will make sure that, uh, you know, everybody understands that they should be washing their hands. I'm just laughing my butt off because, you know, I watched my three-year-old daughter go into the sink and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't use that much hand soap. You know, I don't need a sink full of bubbles, you know, so I mean, yeah. we're not going to keep up with her, but evidently she's more cleanly than me that just takes a little squirt and lathers up and, you know washes up and then uh, and then she told me well i can tell you're not washing your hands because there's not bubbles in the sink it's like bubbles in the sink is one of my pet peeves i rinse the sink out <laughs> until yeah, all the bubbles are gone good. yeah and and so then uh you know i actually just being a smart ass put uh bath bubbles in the sink and filled it up and said okay there's my bubbles but <laughs> doesn't count stop I, it i when when we first came out of lockdown, I was still in a little bit of paranoia phase and you know, there's hand sanitizer everywhere. And, and my wife and I went to the mall for something and she, she got quite annoyed with me because every time we saw a hand sanitizer station, I was like, let's use it. And she's like, we literally just used it already. And like, yeah. you know, my, my skin's dry and falling off my hands just about. <laughs> and I'm like, no, let's use it. As so she's like, no, I, I haven't touched anything. I, I've already used it. And so I'm like surreptitiously squirting it in my hand. And I'm like, hold hands, sweetie. And she's like, ew, gross, slime. <laughs> Sneaking the hand sanitizer. Romantic. It's, it's romantic. It's caring. That's what it is. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I, I went to a, a place where they have this. They, uh, they, they actually misordered. But they have a, a sanitation station before you walk into this place of business. And they ordered all these sanitizers that had fragrances, <laughs> fragrances. <laughs> and so you had watermelon and, and butterfly spring and, you know, all these different ones you could choose from because they couldn't get anything else. They couldn't get just regular hand sanitizer. So they went like the bath and body works or whatever the hell it was and, and bought yeah. these hand sanitizers and you went out, you know, and, the guys are were kind of screwing around and so they're taking hand sanitizers and rubbing it on my back to make sure i was <laughs> on the back of my shirt thank you i didn't i wasn't shirtless but um <clears throat> but yeah and decontamination uh, yeah i mean just i mean and the stuff was just 
<laughs> just stunk. I mean, it was just perfumey and, you know, perfume, perfume and alcohol, you know? Yeah. And uh, I smelled when I got done because they kept on putting stuff on me. And I didn't notice what I was doing, what they're doing. Oh, I have a God. thick shirt on. I'm like, it smells like strawberries here, you know, whatever. <laughs> that is like the most 2020 thing in the world, isn't it? To take hand sanitizer, which would be toxic if you ate it, and scent it like food. Right. I, I encountered that as strawberry hand sanitizer. I'm like, this is this smells delicious. Why does this smell delicious? It makes you want to lick your fingers, which this. is really counterintuitive to, you know, trying to sanitize yourself. I mean, it's yes. really, yeah. It's such an insane thing to do. <laughs> Oh gosh. I had, I had to go home and take a shower before my next thing and, you know, change my clothes because it just stunk. It, I, I smelled like a whorehouse. It was just like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Also a place you should sanitize after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one, one place where hygiene should be, you know, <clears throat> number one on your list. I think so. I would think, but yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> Oh, anyway, uh, yeah, strawberry hand sanitizer. That? I don't know how we got into that. <laughs> so back to your books on strawberry hand sanitizer. Yes, that's the next one. Do it! <laughs> I think it's a moment in time. By the time I got it written and released, the, the moment would be gone. The moment would be gone, and yeah. yeah. No, my, uh, my, my daughter actually has a bunch of little scented ones in her car. And, and I was writing with her and she's like, here's some hand sanitizer. It's like Wonderberry. What the hell is a Wonderberry? Oh, it just smells really, really good. You know, and it, it had lotion in it and everything else. And, you know, it had, you know, in, in the alcohol and okay, fine. I'll use it. And I'm like, you know, it feels really nice. Ooh, look, you know, look at how it feels. And then you smell the alcohol and it's like, okay smell it, it smells like a jello shot that i take back in college you know again <laughs> i wanted to lick my fingers but i did i didn't i i withheld well done you're very strong yeah it, it was very good but otherwise you know it smells delicious yeah but anyway. dangerous very dangerous oh uh, just uh so we can get a little bit of business done um going back to the psychology workbook for writers what's what's the one thing that you see from a psychological standpoint that people mess up on on the characters give them a little give them a little advice doctor i <laughs> It's, I, I think it's, you know, the, the classic stuff and kind of whatever angle you come at it from is, is important. And it's like giving your characters an actual motivation for the things that they do. And I think, you know, often people talk about this in, in writing groups all the time. This is not a, a new piece of advice, but, you know, your villain shouldn't just wake up one day and go, I'm going to be evil. That'll be fun. Um, you know, there's got to be people make sense in their own way um and that's you know something that was really drummed into me in, in my counseling training and, and my supervisor used to say it all the time you know it doesn't doesn't matter how out there you know people's behavior or, or thinking is they make sense in in their own unique kind of way and it's figuring out why this behavior makes sense mm -hmm. um and so if, if you've got us an understanding of why your character is doing the things that they're doing then it's gonna even you can make them do the most outrageous things but if they have a, a good understandable usually grounded in some sort of emotional trauma reason for doing it then people are going to believe it and it's going to seem real because real people do crazy things for, no for all sorts of reasons don't. <laughs> they do not it's in the true. real world yeah, in the real world, they will make strawberry flavored sanitizer. Yeah. <laughs> and it's delicious. <laughs> I'm sure. And if you gargle uh, that, you don't have to brush. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's just kind of taking that that kind of approach to it, I think. And and yeah, and in, in this particular workbook is and for me, because that's my background, it, it makes a lot of sense to come at it from that sort of therapeutic uh, psychology kind mm -hmm. of angle and and i think that it does help with that um, so that was that was the plan of of the book and and the questions help people to kind of put that you know structure that and and help them to understand it sure yeah. very cool 
Well, we're we're kind of running to the uh, to the uh, you know hour mark of our conversation here. Believe it or not. Wow, went fast. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. So, any last uh, comments on uh, for your readers or fans or whatever you want to call them? You know, uh, should it just be buy my book? Because is that <laughs> you can absolutely just say just buy my book. You know, and and by the way, I'll release one when I'm damn well ready. You know, type thing. So, <laughs> and uh, you know, follow me on uh, you know Facebook because I won't post anything there either. But I'll surprise you with the new book, and then you must buy it. De- definitely follow me on on facebook because i do uh, post on there from time to time um and i so on facebook i'm just look for me darren smith there's a, a darren smith author which is more sort of writing focus and then there's just me if, and you're welcome to to connect to either one um on twitter i'm at darian wordsmith and on instagram i'm also at darian wordsmith uh, and I've got a website, which is www.darian-smith.com. Okay. Uh, and Darian is D-A-R-I-A-N. Uh, so I always like to spell that out because people will always spell it wrong, even when it's right in front of them. <laughs> you know, lucky for you that I'm going to be putting all those links in the show notes so people can just click on them. So excellent. <laughs> you know, if you if you really need the proper spelling of Darian, um, it'll be in the show notes. Just look look down look down on the excellent podcast. Yeah, right there right there right right, right here <laughs> just follow this link you know type yeah whatever <laughs> so you have any big plans for your saturday buy this book yes. well actually actually buy book one maybe to start with if you haven't read <laughs> and then buy book two and then buy, then book, buy it, all three at the same time and we'll give you a deal even better yeah even better um I might even have, here we go. Book one, book two. All right. There you go. Look at that. Uh, plans for Saturday. Yeah, I have um, a friend coming over, uh, my wife, who is also a, a writer. So if you're into uh, small town contemporary romance, look up Adrian Smith as well. Um, Wait a minute. So- your, your wife is a romance writer and you let me just go, go ahead and start making fun of them? Great. <laughs> she she's uh how do they term it? It's like sweet and spicy and those kinds of levels. So she's the sweet. So there's there's not the sex in her ones. Oh okay. Um, so you were fine. You you were you were slagging off on the erotic on, on the erotica, yeah. Okay, yeah. I just, and all and all, you know, much as much as we mm-hmm. laugh at erotic horror and, and all that, romance in general, all of those genres, I have the most respect for the that is a juggernaut in publishing and those people know what they are doing they do they they absolutely do respect um there's some writing groups that are that are uh uh based off of romance writers in in their successes and those people are are vicious in what they do for their advertising and i mean it's just i shouldn't say vicious but i mean very meticulous on on how they promote things and yeah. you know us dumb fiction writers are like oh i guess i'll do a facebook ad you know it's like no 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 they have you know they have the juggernaut of what they do for their advertising and it's very and it works yeah i often say to, to new writers they're like oh what should who should i talk to what, what should i do i'm like join your local romance writing group i don't care that you don't write romance they understand the business and they will they do. teach you stuff um the fir- I've gone to their, uh, the local uh, New Zealand Romance uh, Writers Conference. They do an annual conference every year. I've gone to it for the last several years. I, w- I was their MC one year um, because I learned so much from them. And you know, my, my wife originally joined it and then she was, she was sick for the first one, unfortunately. So she couldn't make it and she rang them up and she was like, I, I paid for this, but I'm like really, really ill can I send someone else instead? And they said, yeah. So she sent me hmm. as so I rocked up and I'm like, this is, I'm, the, I'm not used to being the one male in a room full of like 300 women. What's, this is weird. What's happening. Um, but it, it was incredible. So well, what's really interesting it. is your wife sent you there. So yeah. <laughs> huh. <laughs> she's, uh, she's like, you go, you take notes, you bring everything back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, it was it was really really good um so yeah that was that was a bit of a tangent why did i get onto that oh yeah so, so the, 
the plans for Saturday. Um, she, she's getting out. Our friend who's coming over is a, a hairdresser or makeup artist, so he's going to make her look her best. We're going to take some photos because she's going to be in an article um, in a magazine promoting uh, her books. So oh, that's, cool. That's our big plan for today. <laughs> <laughs> Long tangent to get to that. <laughs> Long tangent to get to that. Well, that's very cool. You're both writers. Yeah, she's always trying to marry my characters off. I'm always trying to kill hers. That's how it works. <laughs> Oh, a match made in heaven. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Realistically. No, 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 honey. You shouldn't kiss her. He should stab her. Yeah. yeah. That'd work out better. And then we can send yeah. a team in to find out what he did. There you go. Yes. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. And the necromancer can go ahead and talk to the dead soul and find out it was him. Yeah. And then she's like, no, no, honey. Romance. Romance. Yeah. No death. Happy ending. Right. Oh, Happy okay. endings. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Because as fiction writers, we love happy endings. Yeah, sure, mostly. Abs abs absolutely, because that leads to uh, no book two. And, uh, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> we like our series. That, that is always the danger. Of, and particularly, you know, with, with the Agents of Caledon series, I'm very conscious of the fact that I do solve the, the mystery in each book. And I'm kind of like, should I be putting more hooks in here? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I must admit, in Battle's Legacy... Um, because a lot of people have been saying, oh, this is obviously a trilogy because it's fantasy, therefore it must be a trilogy, right? That's the, that's the rule. Especially um, for speculative, because, you know, that, that only allows for three books. Right, right. Um, <laughs> so, so, and I've never said it's a trilogy. I've always said this is at least six books, guys. Uh, but if people have still said, oh, this, this trilogy. Yeah. Um, so I have put a little bit of a hook that makes it very, very clear there is more to come at the end of Battle's Legacy, but it's, it's not a cliffhanger. They do solve the mystery. So. Yeah, you know, cliffhangers. I love them. I'm going to start doing them. Screw them. I love and hate them, I must admit. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, hate and love are so close to the same emotion that I, I really think that if somebody's really bitching about it, it just means they're going to really buy the next book. Versus somebody that just, oh my God, I love that ending. They may not buy the next book, you know? So, you know, I'm kind of torn, you know? Yeah. yeah. But uh, all these people that say, oh, that's going to be jarring to the reader. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Jar them, you know? <clears throat> but yeah, you're supposed to feel something when you read. <laughs> yeah, right. Anger's a good one. You bet. <laughs> I hate this guy. Oh, that's, a, that's all right. That's all right. Go ahead and tell all your friends on how much you hate me. It's free publicity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. All righty. Very cool. Darian, thank you very much for your time today and spending part of your Saturday with me in the middle of summer in New Zealand. I really appreciate your uh, warm weather. Damn it. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, I'm just going to end with uh, this is Jeff Bacon with the DIY Writer Podcast. If you wouldn't mind, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can see this fabulous author and many more. Um, if you are following or, or listening to a podcast on whatever platform you happen to be on, go ahead and follow me there. Maybe send a review or whatever. I'd appreciate the uh, support and the communication. Other than that, this is Jeff Bacon telling you have a great day and keep your chin up. Bye-bye. Please hit the subscribe button. I get a bonus for every subscriber and I only need 1,506 more to become a full-time paid employee. Help me please.